Hello, this is Megan McCauley, Outreach Coordinator for the Hollywood Fringe Festival, and I am here today at a workshop with... Hi, I'm Erica Mark, and I am a fashion designer, and I'm here today teaching a class about Salvatore Ferragamo and what made him so unique in the fashion industry. And what made him unique is that he thought outside of the box. In the 1930s, when materials were scarce for making shoes, uh, Ferragamo used items like cork, uh, raffia, and fish wire to make shoes. Mm -hmm. So he's a very, very innovative for his time, and he's the first person ever to use cork. He, um, appropriate, appropriately enough, he is also called um, Shoemaker to the Stars, because he did shoes for Marilyn Monroe in the Seven Year Itch, uh, Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz, The Ruby Slippers, and um, many other movies. So. What we are doing is we're making collages out of found objects with the goal uh, to think outside of the box. And we're calling these objects precious objects. And these um, little collages are for the class to keep and use later on in life to uh, get inspired. That's cool. So Do you guys are. mind if I show some of your stuff here? So these are some of our precious objects. We've got all these awesome supplies laid out on the table here. So got, far. It's not not too. It's pretty cool. <laughs> and then here's Maybe. one that I made. Do you guys mind if I show yours too? Okay. Sure. And so the idea came from Erica, right? You took a class during school where you guys made these for like weekly as weekly projects. Um, we did. It was a weekly ongoing project throughout the semester, and I have um, my book of precious objects from 15 years ago cool. and I still use that uh, book of those collages to this day for inspiration when I'm doing um, special projects for um, clients and I actually used the book not too long ago to do a project for Urban Outfitters. Cool and you're doing this workshop as a part of working with the Hollywood yes. Arts, right? Yes, I'm part of cool. the um, Hollywood Arts so I was asked today to teach this class for the Hollywood Fringe Festival. Awesome, thank you. Stacy Jones here on the first actual day of the festival. It's June 16th, 2000. And I'm apparently the second show. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm here with Jackie Loeb of Jackie Loeb Sings the Worst Songs Ever Written. That's correct. And it That's was correct. great, great. Thank you. It was so Thank funny. Thank you for coming along. You're very sweet for coming. I've got, as my friend keeps reminding me, she said, you got to stop telling people they're so sweet. They're so sweet. <laughs> it's four o'clock in the afternoon. On a, I don't even know what day it is. It's Thursday. And just the fact that people showed up. Yes, they were free tickets. Um, That's another thing my friend <laughs> Said you got it, Jackie. Stop being so green. You can't tell people you're giving away free tickets. Um, I'm not a very good businesswoman, but I do find Americans very sweet. Even if it's fake, even if it's a facade, I love it. Well, you're also extremely funny and extremely talented singer. Tell us a little bit about what your uh, what your show is about. Okay, well, it's a tribute to the worst songs ever written. Basically, it's just an excuse for me to perform for more than five minutes and not have to bring 20 people with an eight-drink minimum. So <laughs> when I found out about the Fringe Festival, I just thought, I want to do a show. I did this show last year in Sydney. It sold out. It toured all over the place. It I sold out in a few shows in Sydney. But anyway, I've got to stop being so honest. Um, so it's a homage, pays homage to the worst songs ever written and I try and cover all genres from rap music to hip hop music to musical theatre to <laughs> 1970s pop, middle of the road, everything because I imagine that this show is, yeah, it's going to sell out, it's going to attract such a diverse audience so I try to accommodate for everyone, try and everyone's musical taste. That's great. Mm. So when, it, when can people come and see your show? Oh, I, I've got about 200,000 flyers here. Let's read. That's someone else's flyer. Look, this is going to be an attractive shot. <laughs> I'm a camel toe. Great. Please come. It is on at the, um, the 16th of June. Sorry you've missed that one. The 17th of June at 10 p.m. The 18th of June. This is like doing an infomercial. 18th of June at 5.30 p.m. The 20th of June at 9 p.m. I hope you can't see my facial hair. That's pretty close. And the 23rd, I don't care anymore. No, no one loves me. The 23rd of June at 7 p.m. And they can book by going to www.hollywoodfringe.org, the Asylum Lab. Um, and it's all tickets are $10. But as I said, I'm a failed businesswoman. If you're with the Fringe Festival and you want to come, just come. I prefer to have people there than empty seats. Well, you heard it here first, folks. Jackie Loeb, she sings the worst Please songs, and she is funny. And I want a green card and a manager. I don't know what for, but I want 
I just want one. Everybody's got one. <laughs> Thank All you so much. All the Australians are Jackie. getting them. Oh, Thank man, you. This is Thank so you, great. Stacey. I hope you have a great run Thank and that you, you enjoy the rest of the Hollywood Fringe Thank and uh, you. and that you continue making people laugh. I hope so too. <laughs> and I hope I continue to meet beautiful, lovely Americans like Stacey. Oh, thank you. I That's so America. sweet. <laughs> I want to marry America. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Pleasure. Jackie. Uh, and I was in LA when I started kind of working on my show, The Most Fun Funeral, for those of you that are just walking through, playing tomorrow night, 10 p.m. up at uh, IO West. And proceeds go to charity. Fuck yeah. Um, <laughs> So I came up with the idea for the show because I just couldn't stop thinking about my death. Uh, I went to, both of my grandmothers died, one right after the other. They were like these two little peas in a pod in a very southern, conservative, angry, withered old pod. And um, they died very close together, so I spent about a month there um, in Baton Rouge for my grandmother's funerals. This is not stand-up, by the way, if you're expecting jokes. Um, <laughs> Sorry. So, uh, and while I was there, I started thinking, oh my god, I'm gonna die some way dumb. I'm gonna, I'm gonna die, like, driving in my car, drinking a smoothie, and, like, you know, it's not even fast. I'm not gonna be driving fast in some horrible, exciting, explosion of car accident. I will just be driving and I'll be like changing the radio, sipping my smoothie and, you know, making sure that my hair looks red and uh, I'll be, you know, I'll have to stop suddenly and just get impaled by smoothie and that, I became convinced that that was how I was going to die, just some way dumb um, and I realized that I really wanted to at least like know what kind of death I was going to aim for. <laughs> and I know you're all thinking, oh, I would die during sex, right? Right? <laughs> this is a bad idea. Well, for a few reasons. One, odds are good you're naked, or you're wearing whatever you need <laughs> while you have sex. So, um, and then, and then the worst part of that is you're either, um, leaving the person or people that you're having sex with, no judgment, or, or you die with them, like that's the best, like that's the best option is you die with them in some relatively normal sexual thing. So here, so I finally, I figured out, kind of mapped out how I wanted to go. I would like to have just had sex with my amazing prince, who is also a doctor astronaut, still single, and um, we will uh, we will just have had amazing sex, and I'll put on a robe, a chaste little robe, I'll wander out of our castle into our menagerie of exotic animals, and I'm not going to do anything stupid like go play with the tiger, go to the dragon. I'm just going to go up to our little pet unicorn. Good morning, pet unicorn. Maybe, maybe give it a piece of sugar. I don't know. Just, you know, but I need its little way around the sugar. I don't have any more unicorn. I don't, no, no, not any more sugar. Unicorn? Yeah. That is how. That is how I would like to go. If I could, if I could find it so if anyone is listening that might be able to have a unicorn, let me know. Thank you so much. My show is the most fun funeral at I.O. at 10 p.m. tomorrow night. Keep it Stacey Jones here. I'm outside the Fringe Beer Tent where I just saw a little bit of stylings from Ann Brashier, who is the star of... Um, the most fun the funeral, funeral, which she has just one show tomorrow at yeah. I.O. And what time is that at? 10 p.m. 10 p.m. Friday, June 17th, tomorrow. So tell me a little bit about what your show is about. It is about death and funerals and fear and loss, but it's hilarious. Um, I played death sort of hosting a really competitive <laughs> reality show. Uh, it's not for the faint of heart, I would say. But uh, I think it's a really, in the end, a really deeply moving, intense show. I hope it's going to 
shock the hell out of people. Can I say that? Yeah, yeah. You can say whatever you want. I was gonna shock the shit out of people. All right, awesome. Okay, Tell me a little bit about how you uh, how you developed it. How you decided to uh, put this together. Why why did you decide to do this show? Well, um, I was writing a lot right after my dad passed away, and my mom had passed away when I was a kid, and. Um, just kind of couldn't escape dealing with death as a writer. Like even when I would set out to write a funny story, it would just end up about death. So I figured I should condense that into just one thing that really explored death head on. And uh, so I started writing, ended up with something that kind of had a solid beginning and a middle and an end. And I performed that in New Zealand with the help of a director uh, for a French festival there. And then I was like, okay, that was good, but that was more, I would like to create something more universal and something that was less about, oh, I feel sorry for me, and more about, hey, let's like call that person that you should call because you've been too scared to call them because you don't know what the fuck to say. Or like, wow, I really should go back and give that person a hug because I was, I was too awkward to talk about. And like, yeah, wow, I, I should sit down with my girlfriend and maybe we should talk about this because it's not going to happen now or soon or God forbid, you know. But like we don't get to really deal with death. And at, at the time I was working on the show, I was doing a lot of comedy and I found it so hard to talk to anyone other than my really close friends about what I was going through. And so, um, and then I had a lot of friends also just in that time kind of lose parents, you know, and being able to be some, like, yeah, provide a space for people to talk about really, really, really difficult stuff was important. Well, that's great. That sounds awesome. I mean, you you said that you didn't even have any jokes. I think she's okay. wonderful. Oh, look, it's Ben Hill okay. Festival director. I, I think I, she, she just hit Cabaret, and it was a fantastic performance. She didn't even. She yeah. said she wasn't even doing any jokes, and she was hilarious. She didn't need jokes. So you should go see her show, The Most Fun Funeral, tomorrow, the 17th of June, at 10 p.m. at I.O. West. And yes. thanks so much for talking to me tonight, Anne. Thank you. I hope you. you have a great show tomorrow night. Thank you, Stacy. <laughs> New Mexico volunteers shaking it up. Man, insane. Remember that band? <laughs> what? Look, it's James. Any words of wisdom? Yes. Wait, wait. James Daily Shot. What? No. Whatever not happened right to that? Now. What Whatever happened, happened to that? To that? Huh? You can't do that now. It's not fair. Give us um, some bartender wisdom, though. All right. Always smile. <laughs> Peterson. Hey, you directed that thing that I saw. Oh, I did, yeah. What was that? Uh, uh, the, the play, right? A play. A play. I directed a play. We're on TV. you believe that? The play is called Matt and Ben. Ryan watches it like this every every time. That's some true love yes. right there. And it runs four more times throughout the festival. When? June 6th, 17th, 19th, 24th. Go to HollywoodFringe.org to see the dates. Because my... My, I, my he wrist. hurt his wrist. I hurt my wrist. I hurt my wrist. That's his wrist brace. I'm bad with dates. Especially first dates. Is this your directorial debut? In LA, it was. It is. And then you've done many more things since then. Many. So much more. Many. Two. <laughs> Two. Good job, Peterson. It's weird looking at you through this camera. <laughs> Oh, there you are. Thanks, Stacey. Good job. Thanks. Thank you. I'll use my bad wrist. Good wrist. I got nothing.